Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's agenda, we gotta finish the rear suspension, all the tuning on the rear suspension. Whether that means a little mini C-notch or not, we're gonna finish it. So we got my springs in. I went from a 200 pound, which is on it, I bought a 300 pound spring. So we're gonna swap those out real quick. So we're gonna jump right into this one. Let's lift the truck up in the air, pull the rear coilovers off, we'll swap those springs out, and then we'll drop it back down and see if we can get the ride height low enough to where I like it and have enough clearance with these new springs without the axle smacking off the frame like it was. <laughs> We are back on the ground. These coilovers are as low as they will go, and that's not quite low enough. Now, I'm not worried about that because these springs are going to settle. All springs settle quite a bit, actually, from when they're brand new. Uh, so, you know, eventually that will probably drop down, I don't know, I'd guess another half inch. So, that's right about where I want it. And these things are about perfect for spring height. They're stiff enough to where I can jump on it. I can jump in the back. If I really, really jump on the very back, I can get it to hit the bump stops, but just pushing down on it, it's way better than before. So I think these springs are gonna work perfect. And I don't think I'm gonna worry about doing a C-notch and running, redoing all the exhaust just for 
I don't know, another half inch. So I'm not too worried about that. Plus, like I said, these coilovers are as low as they'll go, but they should break in and settle down a little bit. Now the front, I am gonna have to come up a little bit. Just I'm just gonna kind of match the front to the back, but that's gonna be when I get my new springs in. Like I said, I'm having a custom set built and I haven't got those yet. Well, now we gotta figure out bump stops on the front end. So what we're gonna do is I completely pulled down this whole collar on the spring on that coilover so it went all the way down and i got the shock to bottom out so i'm gonna set this up i'm gonna cut this about a quarter inch higher than before the shock bottoms out just so we're not smacking off the bottom of the shock rather be hitting out of, off of a bump stop so these bolt on the factory these are factory they bolt on right here but they're obviously too tall so i'm gonna cut these right about in half and that's gonna be about perfect so they're all dirty we gotta sandblast them i've never sandblasted rubber i guess we'll see how that goes One of the last things we need for the interior of the truck is a set of seat belts. I didn't want to go through and try to find some used seat belts out of another car that would work. I just picked these up. These are kind of a universal seat belt from seatbeltsplus.com. Now, I figured I would spice it up a little bit with some red. So, we got these. Those are looking good. These buckles here, and we got the hardware kits. They should be pretty easy to bolt on. Now, I'm just gonna take this cover off here. You can see we got a mount down here and that actually bolts on just like the factory one did and then we'll have to mount it to the floor where the factory one did and then mount this up on the pillar and then i think these brackets here kind of bolt like that for the uh, buckle and then we'll drill a hole in the floor and mount that
Well, these gotta be the easiest seat belts I've ever had to put in. So, like I said, we got the little L bracket. I know it's dark in here, everything's black. But we got that little L bracket there, got the buckles bolted in, and I used all the factory holes for the actual belts. So you can see right down here, factory hole in the bottom, factory hole in the side, and that is also the factory hole. And those are all braced on the inside, so those are very, very strong mounting points. Well now, I gotta bring it outside, even though we got a crap ton of snow. I did plow the driveway out, but we're gonna see what we can do. I wanna get it out, and I wanna try out the AEM wideband that we got. We got the new one in, so I wanna try that out, make sure it works, and kinda see where our AFRs are at right now. Well guys, the weirdest thing just happened to me when I started this truck up. So I started it up, obviously it had full fuel in the carburetors, so it ran until it ran out of fuel and my fuel pump wasn't working. So I went through, put a new relay in it, checked all the wiring. I noticed the oil pressure light on the dash was like just glowing super dim. You won't believe what it was, I will show you. So I don't know how this makes any sense, but uh, I was messing with these fuses because I went through and I bought all brand new fuses for these because some of them were just way too big. One was wrapped in foil to make it work because it was blown. And I was having one that had a bad connection. It was this heater fuse. And I don't know how that makes any sense. It must all be wired. You can see the nice bright lights here. It must be wired from there through the cluster. And my fuel pump gets a signal from the oil pressure sender, which obviously is connected to this oil pressure light. So what was going on? You can see I was wiggling this around and you can see it kind of goes, the lights go out. So just a bad connection, I guess. I cleaned it up and we are good to go now. So we'll get this thing outside. I just figured I'd show you guys. So I don't know, the cluster must be wired through that heater fuse. <laughs> Alright guys, you can see we got a working AFR gauge or a wideband, so it looks a little rich on the bottom right now, but the truck still is cold, so they say you want about 14 at idle, and then when you're really getting on it, getting after it, you know, 11 to 12 I think is, is pretty normal for uh, wide open throttle. So we'll get this thing warmed up, see where it is at idle, and see if we can even go drive anywhere in the snow. Well, we're on to something with these rear springs. I was cruising around the driveway. I actually got into third gear coming up the driveway, going sideways, messing around a little bit, but this thing never bounced off the frame. So I think we're gonna be good for these rear springs. And if we do, like I said, we got bump stops in it, so it's not the end of the world if you smack it off the frame every once in a while, just because we do have bump stops, but we wanna try to avoid that if we can. But like I said, the only other option is cutting out the frame and rewriting my exhaust, redoing all that. Well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. If any of you wanna check out any of the parts we used in this video, everything will be linked down in the description box. You can follow my links, check it all out if you see something you like. Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, we should have front springs soon so we can get that all buttoned up. But for now, I think we're good to go in the back. Once you guys go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.